Hey there, bloomers and friends. Rev Kev and Jack McClelland Hello, coming to you from uh, the Bloom office. We're here together uh, in this uh, new phase of Bloom's life. Um, some who have been longtime Bloom Tube watchers may remember that there have been other times in the past when our moderator has um, been in the Bloom Tube picture uh, for a time and even taken over the slot uh, a few times. and. Uh, Jack has expressed an interest in doing that and we're very excited to have him participate in that way. So um, I will continue to do BloomTube um, um, often and Jack will be providing uh, updates from time to time depending upon how he thinks is the right thing to do. But for now what we want to do is allow Jack to, as our new moderator for Bloom, to introduce himself and to speak with you a little bit on his own. So over to you, Jack. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, I'm kind of looking forward to this. Uh, I've been a member of Bloom now for about th not quite three years. Uh, my background, I do come from the United Church of Christ background. I have been a moderator once before at a church back in Chicago. And I can tell you so far after a month or two here, it's very exciting being a moderator of a church that is young and growing. And yes, we're gonna call ourselves young. We're entitled to do that <laughs> at 16 years old. Um, and maybe even the age cohort of our congregation still is younger than the one I was at before back in West Chicago, Illinois, where my husband and I uh, moved from. Um, Mike and I have been going to the United Church of Christ, started back going to a, uh, one called Bethany United Church of Christ in Chicago back in the early 2000s. And to be honest, it was in response to the, uh, the bouncer ad mm. that uh, United Church of Christ was running back then, where the guy with the velvet rope letting only certain people in and we had not been going to church at all. We saw that ad and said, that's the place for us. Uh, found that church to be welcoming, found St. Michael's United Church of Christ in West Chicago to also be uh, very welcoming. But as good as they were, there's nothing quite like the welcome at Bloom. Uh, it's hard to describe what we're like. It just kind of happens organically. Uh, I enjoy now, I was treasurer for the last two years, which means after services, I was always counting money. I was not able to be part of the fellowship hour. As moderator, that's the best part about this job. I can be part, be part of fellowship, and I can actually talk and meet new people when they come in and be part of that welcome and greet. Uh, anyway, um, the, the excitement of being part of it, the, the uh, activities that are going on with the church, uh, coming off the first uh, uh, spring fling where I was the moderator, what was going on, I take no credit for what was happening there, but to see the success, how that has become, and to be part of the growth of spring fling, be part of the growth of the church, all of it I find exciting. And uh, part of all that, uh, Kevin, my background being in Chicago, Kevin and I bonded very quickly when I uh, came uh, as a uh, first time uh, member and uh, traded all of our Chicago stories back and forth and uh, found out we knew so many people in common but never knew each other back in Chicago. Probably frequented some of the same bars, knowing me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing you, no. <laughs> um, so I don't want to dominate this, um, but I'm uh, enjoying the relationship that Kevin and I are establishing, uh, the working relationship. I don't know how many of you know this, but Kevin and I meet every single week, uh, Thursday mornings. Uh, sometimes it's heavy conversations about the church, sometimes it is reminiscing about Chicago. But it's part of the getting to know each other, it's part of the um, uh, bonding process. It's part of my, under my learning so much about what has happened with Bloom in the past 16 years. And it is, like I said, it is, it is exciting being part of a young organization where we have just enough history that can guide us, but not all that tradition that says, this is the way we do things. That's kind of scary too, because it kind of means we're inventing as we go along, which is where I come back to Bloomers and Friends going, I'm open, my address uh, and phone number are in the directory, I encourage, send things with emails, send things, uh, uh, call me. I'm always willing to talk. I need ideas. I need some of the background and history that you might bring uh, to help guide me. I don't pretend I have any of the answers. I've got a wonderful team we're working with right now, the entire Bloom Open, Open Leadership. Uh, our meeting, in fact, we're having a meeting tonight with Bloom Open Leadership uh, in anticipation of, of our congregation meeting next month on the 19th of third. May. Third, third Sunday, of, third of, Sunday of, May. of May. I think it's the night. Check my check the calendar. I'm not positive. Um, this Sunday after Mother's Day. Okay. But getting ready, getting ready for that. 
the first one I'll be leading. And I'm not normally a nervous person, but it's always it's interesting following behind John DiNapoli, who he was the only moderator I knew here at Bloom, and I find that a kind of a tough act to follow. But as Kevin always tells me, you're not John DiNapoli. You got to do it your way, mm -hmm. and I find that very encouraging. So I thank Kevin for making it possible for me to be me. Uh, you keep giving me the camera, I could probably talk for another two hours about my background. Uh, a little bit more about me perhaps, I'm married, uh, my husband Mike Termini, we've been together 25 years. Um, we do look at our marriage as having taken place back in 2006, even though that it was not legal. It was one year after the United Church of Christ had determined at the, what is it called? General the, the Synod. General, General Synod. Mike and I were there for that oh, vote, really? we were there and would, that they would uh, support marriage equality. We asked our pastor at the time, a gentleman by the name of Reverend Bill Bordenaro, if he would marry us. I remember his response was, oh boy, would I? So 2006, September, we got married. And we always look at that as being our marriage because that's the one that counted to us. That's the one that was in church with our family, with music, at the altar, blessed by our pastor, and a good reception, I might add. Mm -hmm. uh, and we did have a civil union. Mike and I did get married out here in Palm Springs legally uh, in that window when it was legal in California after Prop 8 was overturned by the Supreme Court, but before it became legal in Illinois. Um, and I don't want to say that was unimportant because too many people fought too long and too hard for those rights, but the marriage in the church is the one that mattered most to Mike and I. Let me just ask you one more question about um, your business background. Okay. You, you maybe maybe a, a minute or so on your uh, Boy, I've been retired. career. I've been retired so long. <laughs> I don't even think about that anymore. I spent uh, 25 years right out of college, working for um, Illinois Bell, AT and T. When the breakup of the Bell system took place, I went to work for Ameritech, a uh, little company at the time called Ameritech Mobile, which is now I believe Verizon Wireless. I was the 34th employee. Three years later, when I, I was VP of Human Resources there. Uh, three years later when I left, there were like 3,000 employees. Now it's like I don't even know how many. Um, from there I went to the corporate offices of, of Ameritech. Um, had an opportunity for an early retirement at age 48 and I took it. Never looked back, um, never never made as much money but never had as much fun. Or ha I had a lot more fun afterwards. Uh, uh, human resources at big companies back when I, before I left, was becoming not a very pleasant place to be. And uh, we were always downsizing people, and as human resources, I was kind of in charge of that. Uh, I, guess I always say I don't want to make myself sound noble, but the third year in a row when we had to get rid of 6,000 people, and I was asked to manage that project, I kind of looked myself in the mirror and said, do I really want to do this the rest of my life? And I, the answer was no. And I was fortunate enough that I was able to uh, take advantage of a very excellent separation package when I volunteered to leave and have look again, have not looked back. Worked for the next few years as a consultant off and on, and then found a very non-demanding job uh, in terms of, of uh, decision-making, if you will. But I was uh, a Weight Watcher leader for 25 years. Uh, met many thousands of wonderful people and maintain my skills of being able to deal with uh, groups of people. And I do remember very, know very clearly that my experience doing that for 25 years helps me in my role as a moderator. Because one thing I've discovered in a very short period of time I've been moderator is the importance here of listening and finding out what people are really telling me. Which I, again, I come back to telling you, if there's something you want to talk about, I am here anytime, via email or phone or text. Well, Jack, we could listen to you all day, and uh, uh, it is uh, great to learn your background. I think I do want to emphasize what you intimated at, is that I do say that every moderator of Bloom has been different, and everyone has always been committed to the growth and success and, and uh, effective ministry of, of Bloom as a part of Christ's church in the world and as a part of our community here and Jack is just getting started at that and uh, with his experience uh, as treasurer and as his experience in other churches in the past 
We're looking forward to all he has to offer, and I'm sure you'll provide him with a lot of support as we go through this ministry together. So that's it for now. We look forward to this Sunday. It's Palm Sunday at Bloom. I know that folks are working really hard to make it be a really meaningful service for all of us, from the visual presentation to the um, Bloom Players presentation to the music that's going to be a part of it. So we hope you'll be there. If you can't be with us in body, please be with us in spirit. And as always, please keep us in your prayers.